Hey ROM hackers, it's Sasyata. I'm going to be showing you how to make your own ROM hack today using HG Engine in order to make your own custom trainers. We're going to be looking at how to give custom EVs, IVs, as well as custom abilities, natures, how to make your Pokemon shiny, and how to give your Pokemon trainers custom nicknamed Pokemon. Let's jump right into it. Alright, so I think the best way to do this is to simply show you how I made one of these trainers for my recent ROM hack, Mythic Silver. So I want to take a look at Youngster Joey here. And Youngster Joey is going to have three different Pokemon, and you'll notice that Snom and Patchat are both a part of the HG Engine expansion since they're plus Gen 5+. Plus. So let's look in particular at this Eevee, and what we're going to want to do is look at Youngster Joey. So the way you get to um, the way you get to all of your HG Engine trainers is going to open up your HG Engine directory, so wherever you have that cloned. So you're going to want to go into Armips, and then you're going to want to go into Data, and you're going to want to go into trainers and open up trainers. And so I already have this open. And if you scroll through it, you'll see that each trainer has some trainer data and then a number. The number is the index of that trainer. And so when you want to make this trainer appear in DSPRE, you need to give it this index. Uh, if you want to look at my DSPRE guide and how to add trainers, you should also look at that. It'll be linked in the description. You can also give the trainer a name. Uh, it'll have a trainer class, and it will, as well as some trainer mon types. So let's just look at these headers. This is the most basic one that the vanilla game will come with. Uh, so if we want to learn more about what these different classes are, you can simply go into uh, your HG Engine directory, and instead of going into data, uh, we're going to go into Armips include, and this has all of the constants that we're going to want. And so we can click on constants, and this will open this. And so let's look up uh, all caps class underscore something, and it will show you that I have different trainer classes here. And these are all going to refer to things like ace trainers, veterans, ninja boy, whatever. So these are the exact things that you're going to want to have in your trainer classes. So let's go back to trainers um, and make sure you have the constant spelled correctly here. We'll get into the trainer mon types in just a second because when we want to make more complicated trainers, we need to have a lot of different constants here. Uh, the number of mons is pretty uh, specific, it's just zero, uh, 1 through 6. Uh, but if you want to do a randomized lead, which is a fun thing you can do, uh, you can also do a uh, number of mons with 0x80 and then this vertical bar and then a 3 or 4 four, five, six, whatever the number of mons you want there to be. So this 0x80 in this bar will make the lead randomized. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. It might be a fun challenge. So let's go back and look at Youngster Joey. AI flags, since the AI has not been touched by HG Engine, I would recommend using these exact three flags. So just use this exact line as I have it. It gives the master AI, essentially. You can also choose battle type double battle, or you could in instead do single battle and just make it single battle. You'll see that if you're using VS Code, this is going to auto-complete. Uh, I'm going to leave it as double battle since I have a double battle in my hack. Uh, and then you get to the party Pokemon. So this is obviously what we want to look at. Um, so let's compare this to what I had in the trainer sheet. So I have three Pokemon and I'm going to define them in order. The first thing we're going to want to look at is IVs and ability slot. If you want to use ability slots instead of custom abilities, you can simply just do that. Uh, and you can choose ability slot 0 or 32. If you have an even number, it's going to refer you to uh, ability 2. And if you use, uh, ab I think, ability slot 0, it's going to give you the uh, first ability. Um, so the IVs, this is the same way that DSPRE does things. So this is your D DV, your difficulty value. And so this is. Um, uh, 255 refers to all 31 IVs. I personally don't like to do this. I like to set them uh, specifically, and so that's going to be done down here. So you can go set IVs and then just list them out. And if you have this line right here, it overrides this IVs line here. So the idea is that uh, you c you have to have this line uh, since the uh, since HD Engine is going to read off this information sequentially, um, but it gets overridden here. So this is an HP attack, defense spe speed, special attack, and special defense order. It has to be in that order. And then EVs you can set as well. And these all go from 0 to 255. Um, 
Another thing to note here is that EVs don't have to be legal, so you could give 255 in every stat and it would still work, um, but that's up to your game balance, right? Uh, so we can list the Pokemon species here. If we want to learn all of the names and the way they're defined in HG Engine, you can simply go into your HG Engine directory and you're gonna wanna look at RMIPS and then go data and then you're gonna wanna look at Mon data and this is gonna bring you to all of the data for your Pokemon. Uh, so I can just do control F and type in Patrat and it'll show me it's called Species Patrat. Uh, so the thing you want to be careful with here is Pokemon with forms. So let's say I want to do Rotom, uh, and I have Rotom base form, uh, but I actually want to have, say, Rotom, uh, like, Mo, so the grass version. You'll notice that this Mon data looks a little weird, like it doesn't have a name, and that's because the way HG Engine works is it references these things with something called Mon with form. So let's go back to, um, this Pokemon species thing, and let's look up uh, something with Mon with form. So let's say I want to have Rotom with a particular form. I will look at, uh, so I will, instead of saying Pokemon species Rotom, I will do Mon with form species Rotom and then which form it is. And so you can find out which form they are just by simply looking at your Mon data and they're all in order. So the first Rotom is going to be form zero and then the rest of these different forms are going to be, so in order, Rotom heats the first one, so one, and then two, and then three, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can just uh, scroll through those and figure that one out. Um, so for instance, the one I have here is gonna be Rotom Wash because I said Mon with form Rotom two. So going back to Youngster Joey, the fun stuff that you can do with these HG Engine uh, configs is the shiny lock. So you'll, if you want to do a shiny Pokemon, you'll need to have shiny lock as a parameter input here, and then you'll need the number one to make it shiny. Now you'll notice that all the other Pokemon on this youngster Joey have shiny lock zero, and this one has shiny lock one. So I have two that are shiny and one that is not. Even if the Pokemon's not shiny, if you define it for one Pokemon, you need to define it for all of them. So you'll notice that this is one of the things that I have configured here in my trainer mon type. Uh, if I scroll over, I have this flag that says trainer data type shiny lock. So you will need this flag in the, tra uh, the trainer mon type if you're going to use it down here. Now, the other thing you will need is to have additional flags if you want to use, say, a custom nickname. So the additional flag right here shows up up here. Uh, and if you do choose to use that, then if you don't choose to use a nickname on a Pokemon, you'll need additional flag zero. But if you do do additional flags, for instance, trainer data extra type nickname, um, then you will be able to put the next line here which says nickname and then you'll need to parse the uh you'll need to parse the name so the way this works is um pretty simple every time you need to have a capital letter it starts with an uh, underscore before it and if you have a lowercase letter there's an underscore before and after i don't know if you can do spaces right now so you'll need to camel case everything so this one is called run killer um and that's because it has taken many runs it's a just a level 4 ev but it's just the way it goes, and you'll need to end this with end str, so end string, basically. Um, and then you'll need a zero for the rest of the remaining characters. So I think every nickname goes up to 10 characters, and so you'll need zero, comma, zero, comma, zero for the rest of them. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to do this, you can go onto the GitHub page, and I will link this in the description. So in uh, Blue Rose's uh, HD Engine wiki page, you will have this example trainer one, and this is really what I based my uh, trainers off of. Uh, for instance, if you want to call this um, Kingdra just King, all caps, it's K-I-N-G with the underscore before each letter, and then you'll need your end string, and then the rest of these will have to be zero. Uh -huh. So uh, I would recommend, if you're just getting started, to just copy and paste from one of these templates and then just modify things as you go. The other things you can do 
are all listed here. So there's these new fields that have been added. So you can actually choose whether or not this thing is pre-status. And that's one of the additional flags. So if you uh, have another additional flag, you can say, oh, trainer data extra type status. You can start with like a poison Pokemon with guts or something. Um, you can also have the Pokemon have a different type. So you can say types and then have the Pokemon be a type that it's not supposed to be. You can change the PP count, you can give it nicknames, you can do all sorts of really cool things. Um, and this is all uh, basically done in the same document, you'll just need to add some extra lines, play around with it, um, you can do some really, really cool stuff. Of course, once you're done with this, you're going to need to hit your Windows key, and then type in run, and then you're going to need to open WSL, and hit OK. This is going to open the command line, and the last thing you'll want to do is uh, change the directory to your current uh, HD Engine build. And so do CD, and for me it's going to be documents to HD Engine, HD Engine, and you're going to run make dash J, um, and you're going to do a dollar sign with parentheses, and in the parentheses you're going to run nproc. Uh, so this is basically just going to build the ROM with the number of processors that your computer has so it runs as fast as it possibly can. You're just going to run that and then it will output in your HG Engine folder something called test.nds and that's going to be your ROM built with all these changes and you can go ahead and take test.nds and use it with DSPRE and you know move your trainers around in the overworld and whatnot. Uh, but that is essentially uh, the workflow for doing this. Alright, so I hope that helped you get started on making your own trainers in HG Engine. This is some really cool features that you can implement for your own ROM hack pretty easily. Uh, for some of the more complicated features, you'll have to play around with the syntax, uh, but I would recommend getting started with the template on the GitHub page and just modifying things from there. Alright, that's been Sasyata. Hope you have a great time with your hacks.